Welcome to official DVSA, Driving Theory Test, 2022 Updated, UK. Question, which vehicle will use a blue flashing beacon? Give one answer. A. Bomb disposal. B. Breakdown recovery. C. Motorway maintenance. D. Snow plow. The correct answer is A, bomb disposal. Explanation, emergency vehicles use blue flashing lights, if you see or hear one, move out of its way as soon as it's safe and legal to do so. Question, you're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Accelerate hard to get away from it. B. Brake harshly and stop well out into the road. C. Maintain your speed and course. D. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. The correct answer is D. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. Explanation. Pull over in a place where the ambulance can pass safely. Check that there are no bollards or obstructions in the road that will prevent it from passing. Question, who should obey diamond-shaped traffic signs? Give one answer. A. Bus drivers. B. Lorry drivers. C. Taxi drivers. D. Tram drivers. The correct answer is D. Tram drivers. Explanation, these signs apply only to tram drivers, but you should know their meaning so that you're aware of the priorities and are able to anticipate the actions of the driver. Question, a long heavily laden lorry is taking a long time to overtake you. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Change direction. B. Hold your speed. C. Slow down. D. Speed up. The correct answer is C, slow down. Explanation, a long lorry with a heavy load will need more time to pass you than a car. Especially on an uphill stretch of road. Slow down and allow the lorry to pass. Question, what type of emergency vehicle is fitted with a green flashing beacon? Give one answer. A. Ambulance. B. Doctor's car. C. Fire engine. D. Road gritter. The correct answer is B. Doctor's car. Explanation. A green flashing beacon on a vehicle means the driver or passenger is a doctor on an emergency call. Give way to them if it's safe to do so. Be aware that the vehicle may be traveling quickly or may stop in a hurry. Question. At a Pelican crossing, what must you do when the amber light is flashing? Give one answer. A. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. B. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. C. Stop and wait for the green light. D. Stop and wait for the red light. The correct answer is A. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. Explanation. Pelican crossings are signal controlled crossings operated by pedestrians. Push button controls change the signals. Pelican crossings have no red and amber stage before green. Instead, they have a flashing amber light. This means you must give way to pedestrians who are already on the crossing. If the crossing is clear, however, you can continue. Question. What does tailgating mean? Give one answer. A. Driving with rear fog lights on. B. Following another vehicle too closely. C. Reversing into a parking space. D. 
using the rear door of a hatchback car? The correct answer is B, following another vehicle too closely. Explanation, tailgating is the term used when a driver or rider follows the vehicle in front too closely. It's dangerous because it restricts their view of the road ahead and leaves no safety margin if the vehicle in front needs to slow down or stop suddenly. Tailgating is often the underlying cause of rear-end collisions or multiple pileups. Question. Why is it unwise to follow this vehicle too closely? Give one answer. A. Your brakes will overheat. B. Your engine will overheat. C. Your view ahead will be increased. D. Your view ahead will be reduced. The correct answer is D. Your view ahead will be reduced. Explanation. Staying back will increase your view of the road ahead. This will help you to see any hazards that might occur and give you more time to react. Question. What's the minimum time gap you should leave when following a vehicle on a wet road? Give one answer. A. 4 seconds. B. 1 second. C. 3 seconds. D. 2 seconds. The correct answer is A. 4 seconds. Explanation, water will reduce your tire's grip on the road. The safe separation gap of at least 2 seconds in dry conditions should be doubled, to at least 4 seconds, in wet weather. Question. Why should you never wave people across at pedestrian crossings? Give one answer. A. Another vehicle may be coming. B. It's safer for you to carry on. C. They may not be looking. D. They may not be ready to cross. The correct answer is A. Another vehicle may be coming. Explanation. If people are waiting to use a pedestrian crossing, slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't wave them across the road, because another driver may not have seen them, may not have seen your signal, and may not be able to stop safely. Question. You're driving at the legal speed limit. A vehicle comes up quickly behind you, flashing its headlights. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Accelerate to make a gap behind you. B. Allow the vehicle to overtake. C. Maintain your speed to prevent the vehicle from overtaking. D. Touch the brakes sharply to show your brake lights. The correct answer is B. Allow the vehicle to overtake. Explanation. Don't enforce the speed limit by blocking another vehicle's progress. This will only lead to the other driver becoming more frustrated. Allow the other vehicle to pass when you can do so safely. Question. On a road where trams operate, which of these vehicles will be most at risk from the tram rails? Give one answer. A. Buses. B. Cars. C. Cycles. D. Lorries. The correct answer is C. Cycles. Explanation. The narrow wheels of a bicycle can become stuck in the tram rails, causing the cyclist to stop suddenly, wobble or even lose balance altogether. The tram lines are also slippery, which could cause a cyclist to slide or fall off. Question. You wish to turn right ahead. Why should you take up the correct position in good time? Give one answer. A. To allow drivers to pass you on the right. B. To allow other drivers to pull out in front of you. C. To give a better view into the road that you're joining. D. To help other road users know what you intend to do. The correct answer is D, 
to help other road users know what you intend to do. Explanation, if you wish to turn right into a side road, take up your position in good time. Move to the center of the road when it's safe to do so. This will allow vehicles to pass you on the left. Early planning will show other traffic what you intend to do. Question. When should you flash your headlights at other road users? Give one answer. A. When letting them know that you're there. B. When showing that you're about to turn. C. When showing that you're giving way. D. When telling them that you have right of way. The correct answer is A. When letting them know that you're there. Explanation. You should only flash your headlights to warn others of your presence. Don't use them to greet others, show impatience, or give priority to other road users, because they could misunderstand your signal. Question. What should you use your horn for? Give one answer. A. To alert others to your presence. B. To allow you right of way. C. To greet other road users. D. To signal your annoyance. The correct answer is A. To alert others to your presence. Explanation. Your horn mustn't be used between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area or when you're stationary, unless a moving vehicle poses a danger. Its function is to alert other road users to your presence. Question. The conditions are good and dry. When should you use the two-second rule? Give one answer. A. Before restarting the engine after it has stalled. B. Before using the mirror signal maneuver routine. C. When checking your gap from the vehicle in front. D. When traffic lights change to green. The correct answer is C when checking your gap from the vehicle in front. Explanation, in good conditions, the two-second rule can be used to check the distance between your vehicle and the one in front. This technique works on roads carrying faster traffic. Choose a fixed object, such as a bridge, sign, or tree. When the vehicle ahead passes this object, say to yourself only a fool breaks the two-second rule. If you reach the object before you finish saying this, you're too close. Question. You're approaching an unmarked crossroads. How should you deal with this type of junction? Give one answer. A. Accelerate and keep to the middle. B. Accelerate and look to the left. C. Slow down and keep to the right. D. Slow down and look both ways. The correct answer is D. Slow down and look both ways. Explanation. Be cautious especially when your view is restricted by hedges, bushes, walls, large vehicles, etc. In the summer months these junctions can become more difficult to deal with because growing foliage may further obscure your view. Question. At a puffin crossing, which color follows the green signal? Give one answer. A. Flashing amber. B. Flashing green. C. Steady amber. D. Steady red. The correct answer is C. Steady amber. Explanation. Puffin crossings have infrared sensors that detect when pedestrians are crossing and hold the red traffic signal until the crossing is clear. The use of a sensor means there's no flashing amber phase as there is with a pelican crossing. Question. You're in a one-way street and want to turn right. There are two lanes. Where should you position your vehicle? Give one answer. A. In either lane, depending on the traffic. B. 
In the left hand lane. C. In the right hand lane. D. Just left of the center line. The correct answer is C, in the right hand lane. Explanation When you're in a one way street and want to turn right, you should take up a position in the right hand lane. This will allow other road users, not wishing to turn, to pass on the left. Indicate your intention and take up the correct position in good time. Question. At which type of crossing, are cyclists allowed to ride across with pedestrians? Give one answer. A. Pelican. B. Puffin. C. Toucan. D. Zebra. The correct answer is C. Toucan. Explanation, a toucan crossing is designed to allow pedestrians and cyclists to cross at the same time. Look out for cyclists approaching the crossing at speed. Question. Where would you expect to see these markers? Give one answer. A. On a diversion sign. B. On a large goods vehicle. C. On a motorway sign. D. On a railway bridge. The correct answer is B. On a large goods vehicle. Explanation. These markers must be fitted to vehicles over 13 meters long, large goods vehicles, and rubbish skips placed in the road. They're reflective to make them easier to see in the dark. Question. You're driving along this motorway. It's raining. What should you do when following this lorry? Give one answer. A. Allow at least two second gap. B. Be aware of spray reducing your vision. C. Move left and drive on the hard shoulder. D. Move right and stay in the right hand lane. The correct answer is B. Be aware of spray reducing your vision. Explanation, the usual two second time gap increases to four seconds when the roads are wet. If you stay well back, you'll be able to see past the vehicle, you'll be able to stay out of the spray thrown up by the lorry's tires, give yourself more time to stop if the need arises, you'll be able to increase your chances of being seen by the lorry driver. Question. What type of vehicle displays this yellow sign? Give one answer. A. A broken down vehicle. B. A private ambulance. C. A school bus. D. An ice cream van. The correct answer is C. A school bus. Explanation. Buses which carry children to and from school may stop at places other than scheduled bus stops. Be aware that they might pull over at any time to allow children to get on or off. This will normally be when traffic is heavy during rush hour. Question. Why should you reduce your speed when driving along this road? Give one answer. A. A low bridge is ahead. B. A stagger junction is ahead. C. The road narrows ahead. D. The road surface changes ahead. The correct answer is B. A stagger junction is ahead. Explanation. Traffic could be turning off or pulling out ahead of you, to the left or right. Vehicles turning left will be slowing down before the junction, and any vehicles turning right may have to stop to allow oncoming traffic to clear. Be prepared for this, as you might have to slow down or stop behind them. Question. What might you expect to happen in this situation? Give one answer. A. Traffic speed will increase. B. Traffic will move into the left-hand lane. C. Traffic will move into the right-hand lane. D. Traffic won't need to change position. The correct answer is B. Traffic will move into the left-hand lane. 
Explanation, be courteous and allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. Question. You've just passed these warning lights. What hazard would you expect to see next? Give one answer. A. A level crossing with no barrier. B. A school crossing patrol. C. An ambulance station. D. An opening bridge. The correct answer is B. A school crossing patrol. Explanation. These lights warn that children may be crossing the road to a nearby school. Slow down so that you're ready to stop if necessary. Question. You're behind this cyclist. When the traffic lights change, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Allow the cyclist time and room. B. Tap your horn and drive through first. C. Try to move off before the cyclist. D. Turn right but give the cyclist room. The correct answer is A. Allow the cyclist time and room. Explanation. Hold back and allow the cyclist to move off. Some junctions have special areas marked across the front of the traffic lane. These allow cyclists to wait for the lights to change and move off ahead of other traffic. Question. You're driving on a road with several lanes, you see these signs above the lanes. What do they mean? Give one answer. A. The two left lanes are open. B. The two right lanes are open. C. Traffic in the left lanes should stop. D. Traffic in the right lanes should stop. The correct answer is A. The two left lanes are open. Explanation. If you see a red cross above your lane, it means that there's an obstruction ahead. You'll have to move into one of the lanes that's showing a green light. If all the lanes are showing a red cross, then you must stop. Question. Ahead of you, traffic in the left-hand lane is slowing. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Accelerate past the vehicles in the left-hand lane. B. Move across and continue in the right-hand lane. C. Pull up on the left-hand verge. D. Slow down, and keep a safe separation distance. The correct answer is D. Slow down, and keep a safe separation distance. Explanation. Allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. Leave enough room so that you can maintain a safe separation distance, even if vehicles pull in ahead of you. Question. What does the solid white line at the side of the road indicate? Give one answer. A. Cycle path. B. Edge of the carriageway. C. Footpath on the left. D. Traffic lights ahead. The correct answer is B. Edge of the carriageway. Explanation. The continuous white line shows the edge of the carriageway. It can be especially useful when visibility is restricted, such as at night or in bad weather. It's discontinued in some places, for example, at junctions, laybys, entrances or other openings. Question. There's a bus lane on your left. The signs show no times of operation. What does this mean? Give one answer. A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. B. The lane is only in operation at peak times. C. The lane is only in operation in daylight hours. D. The lane isn't in operation. The correct answer is A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Explanation. Bus lane signs show the vehicles allowed to use the lane and also its times of operation. Where no times are shown, the bus lane is in operation 24 hours a day.
Question. You're approaching a zebra crossing. Pedestrians are waiting to cross. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Give way to the elderly and infirm only. B. Slow down and prepare to stop. C. Use your headlights to indicate they can cross. D. Wave at them to cross the road. The correct answer is B. Slow down and prepare to stop. Explanation. As you approach a zebra crossing, look for pedestrians waiting to cross where you can see them. Slow down and prepare to stop. Be especially careful of children and older people, who may have difficulty judging when it's safe to cross. Question. You're in a line of traffic. The driver behind you is following very closely. What action should you take? Give one answer. A. Ignore the following driver and continue to travel within the speed limit. B. Move over to a position just left of the center line of the road. C. Signal left and wave the following driver past. D. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front. The correct answer is D. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front. Explanation. If the driver behind is following too closely, there's a danger they'll collide with the back of your car if you stop suddenly. You can reduce this risk by slowing down and increasing the safety margin in front of you. This reduces the chance that you'll have to stop suddenly and allows you to spread your braking over a greater distance. This is an example of defensive driving. Question. You're driving behind a large goods vehicle. What should you do, if it signals left but steers to the right? Give one answer. A. Drive on, keeping to the left. B. Hold your speed and sound your horn. C. Overtake on the right. D. Slow down and let the vehicle turn. The correct answer is D. Slow down and let the vehicle turn. Explanation. Large long vehicles need extra room when making turns at junctions. They may move out to the right in order to make a left turn. Keep well back and don't attempt to pass them on their left. Question. What should you do when a person herding sheep asks you to stop? Give one answer. A. Continue on, but drive slowly. B. Ignore them as they have no authority. C. Stop and switch off your engine. D. Try to get past quickly. The correct answer is C. Stop and switch off your engine. Explanation. If someone in charge of animals asks you to stop, you should do so and switch off your engine. Animals are unpredictable and startle easily. They could turn and run into your path or into the path of another moving vehicle. Question. You're driving in traffic at the speed limit for the road. What should you do if the driver behind is trying to overtake? Give one answer. A. Accelerate to get away from the driver behind. B. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. C. Move closer to the car ahead, so the driver behind has no room to overtake. D. Wave the driver behind to overtake when it's safe. The correct answer is B. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. Explanation. Keep a steady course to give the driver behind an opportunity to overtake safely. If necessary, slow down. Reacting incorrectly to another driver's impatience can lead to danger. Question. You're driving on a clear night. There's a steady stream of oncoming traffic. The national speed limit applies. Which lights should you use? Give one answer. A. 
Dipped headlights. B. Fog lights. C. Full beam headlights. D. Side lights. The correct answer is A. Dipped headlights. Explanation. Use the full beam headlights only when you can be sure that you won't dazzle other road users. Question. You're waiting in a traffic queue at night. How can you avoid dazzling drivers behind you? Give one answer. A. Use the clutch with the accelerator. B. Use the foot brake only. C. Use the parking brake only. D. Use the parking brake with the foot brake. The correct answer is C. Use the parking brake only. Explanation. In queuing traffic, your brake lights can dazzle drivers behind you. If you apply your parking brake, you can take your foot off the foot brake. This will deactivate the brake lights. Question. What should you do when you're overtaking a horse and rider? Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights as a warning. B. Go past as quickly as possible. C. Go past slowly and carefully. D. Sound your horn as a warning. The correct answer is C. Go past slowly and carefully. Explanation. Horses can be startled by the sound of a car engine or the rush of air caused by a vehicle passing too closely. Keep well back and only pass when it's safe. Leave them plenty of room, you may have to use the other side of the road to go past safely. Question. You're driving along this road. The blue van cuts in close in front of you. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Accelerate to get closer to the blue van. B. Drop back to leave the correct separation distance. C. Flash your headlights several times. D. Give a long blast on the horn. The correct answer is B. Drop back to leave the correct separation distance. Explanation. There are times when other drivers make incorrect or ill-judged decisions. Be tolerant and try not to retaliate or react aggressively. Always consider the safety of other road users, your passengers, and yourself. Question. You're driving at night on an unlit road, following another vehicle. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights. B. Switch off your headlights. C. Use dipped headlights. D. Use full beam headlights. The correct answer is C. Use dipped headlights. Explanation. If you follow another vehicle with your headlights on full beam, they could dazzle the driver. Leave a safe distance and make sure that the light from your dipped beam falls short of the vehicle in front. Question. What can a loose filler cap on your diesel fuel tank cause? Give one answer. A. It can improve your vehicle's fuel consumption. B. It can increase the level of exhaust emissions. C. It can make the engine difficult to start. D. It can make the road slippery for other road users. The correct answer is D. It can make the road slippery for other road users. Explanation. Diesel fuel can spill out if your filler cap isn't secured properly. This is most likely to occur on bends, junctions, and roundabouts, where it will make the road slippery, especially if it's wet. At the end of a dry spell of weather, the road surfaces may have a high level of diesel spillage that hasn't been washed away by rain. Question. In which conditions should you leave at least a two-second gap between your vehicle and the one in front? Give one answer. A. Damp. B. Dry. C. 
foggy. D. Wet. The correct answer is B, dry. Explanation, in good and dry conditions, a driver needs to keep a distance of at least two seconds from the car in front. This should allow enough space for you to stop if the driver in front has to stop suddenly. Question. You're driving a slow-moving vehicle on a narrow winding road. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Give a left signal when it's safe for vehicles to overtake you. B. Keep well out to stop vehicles overtaking dangerously. C. Pull in when you can, to let following vehicles overtake. D. Wave following vehicles past you if you think they can overtake quickly. The correct answer is C, pull in when you can, to let following vehicles overtake. Explanation, if you're driving a slow-moving vehicle along a narrow road, try not to hold up faster traffic. If you see vehicles following behind, pull over in a safe place and let the traffic pass before continuing. Don't wave other traffic past. This could be dangerous if you or they haven't seen any hazard that's hidden from view. Question. What hazard should you be aware of when traveling along this street? Give one answer. A. Children running out between vehicles. B. Glare from the sun. C. Lack of road markings. D. Large goods vehicles. The correct answer is A, children running out between vehicles. Explanation, on roads where there are many parked vehicles, you might not be able to see children between parked cars and they may run out into the road without looking. Question. Which instrument panel warning light would show that headlights are on full beam? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Explanation, you should be aware of all the warning lights and visual aids on the vehicle you're driving. If you're driving a vehicle for the first time, you should familiarize yourself with all the controls, warning lights, and visual aids before you set off. Question. What style of driving causes increased risk to everyone? Give one answer. A. Competitive. B. Considerate. C. Defensive. D. Responsible. The correct answer is A. Competitive. Explanation. Competitive driving increases the risks to everyone and is the opposite of responsible, considerate, and defensive driving. Defensive driving is about questioning the actions of other road users and being prepared for the unexpected. Don't be taken by surprise. Question. You're approaching a red light at a puffin crossing, pedestrians are on the crossing. When will the red light change? Give one answer. A. When a driver from the opposite direction reaches the crossing. B. When the pedestrians have cleared the crossing. C. When the pedestrians push the button on the far side of the crossing. D. When you start to edge forward onto the crossing. The correct answer is B. When the pedestrians have cleared the crossing. Explanation. A sensor will automatically detect that the pedestrians have reached a safe position. Don't drive on until the green light shows and it's safe for you to do so. Question. After refueling your vehicle, what should you do to avoid spillage? Give one answer. A. Check that you've used a locking filler cap. B. Check that your filler cap is securely fastened. C. Check that your fuel gauge is working. D. Check that your tank is only three quarters full. The correct answer is B. Check that your filler cap is securely fastened. Explanation. When learning to drive, 
it's a good idea to practice filling your car with fuel. Ask your instructor if you can use a petrol station and fill the fuel tank yourself. You need to know where the filler cap is on the car you're driving, so you know which side of the pump to park at. Take care not to overfill the tank and make sure you secure the filler cap correctly, so that no fuel leaks onto the road while you're driving. Question. A vehicle pulls out in front of you at a junction. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Accelerate, past it immediately. B. Flash your headlights and drive up close behind. C. Slow down and be ready to stop. D. Swerve past it and sound your horn. The correct answer is C. Slow down and be ready to stop. Explanation. Try to be ready for the unexpected, plan ahead and learn to anticipate hazards. You'll then give yourself more time to react to any problems that might occur. Be tolerant of other road users who don't behave correctly. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you for watching and good luck for your test.